Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Monday morning time of devotion. And as we come together here on Monday morning, we are continuing to look at the book of 1 Corinthians. And today we're going to be in chapter 1, verses 10 through 17. So as we turn to this portion of Paul's letter, let us go to God in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are the great and the almighty one. You have granted unto us this week that we might not only work, but that we might work well, and that we might focus upon the duty you have provided for us, that in every way we might see Christ. And to God, we pray that you would encourage us, guide us, give us your testimony, that we may do all things in accordance with your will. And to God, we give thanks again for the grace shown to us through the Lord Jesus Christ, who has laid down his life for our sins. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today we turn uh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Here with the word of God. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you per perfectly be joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I had baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Amen. So here we have Paul, after he has testified to us of the spiritual gifts of Corinth, that it is a place of the Lord's work, that it has some issues. And the issue that we see presented here most clearly is the party spirit. Now, in a church, this can show up in different ways. In a church where there are distinct socioeconomic groups, you know, the, uh, those with means can, whether intentionally or not, uh, be seen as those who are in charge, and those without means can be relegated to um, duties that require more hands-on like work. You can also see it in a church that is made up of families. The family groups can stay together. They can create kind of insular cliques within a church. You also can see this when there are disagreements within a church. Theologically, we can become part of our teams to such a degree that we no longer see Christ in our neighbor. And in all of these things, Paul is also careful to note that there can be division over the minister. Here we get a sense where people who have been baptized by one of the apostles is using that as some sort of identification as more important, as somehow a super saint because they were washed by Peter or Paul or someone else of equal stature. <clears throat> and in all of these things, we see the world. And we see sin. Most directly, the sin that we see in this is pride. Men love to be built up. They love to be noticed. They loved to be lifted up. And made part of the special group, whatever that might be. Paul here is telling us that he has good news for those who seek these things. There is a special group. And there is a way to be lifted up. And there is a way to be exalted. However, 
what that means is denying yourself and walking after Christ because he alone is the king. He alone is the leader. He alone is the head of the church. And it doesn't matter how talented your minister might be. It doesn't matter how many souls he saved. It doesn't matter how big his ministry is. There is parity in the church. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We are here to exalt Christ alone, not ourselves, not our position, not our family, not our wealth, not our place. All of these things are done away with in a sense. We are still rich. We are still of a family. And these things are to be honored in the right way. However, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, these distinctions, these identities are no longer central to who we are in the church. For we are Christ and we belong to Christ and we are identified with Christ. That is our primary person. And Paul here is telling us that if we would divide over these other things, then we have missed the message. Enjoy what you have received in Christ. For it is your eternal life. And that is your hope and your peace and your comfort, both this day and forevermore. And so, brothers and sisters, as we close this morning, again, it's worthwhile maybe to spend some time meditating this week how you maybe have violated what Paul is warning against. Is this a problem in your heart? I think if we're honest, this is a problem in all of our hearts. We should seek to break down those things within the church that divide us and see the beauty of unity in Christ. For he is our high priest, our king, our prophet, and the one unto whom we cling, both this day and forevermore. Take care, and God bless.